Now they always say congratulations. Work so hard for the whole two vacation. So we are here with the first episode of the Rockies franchise mode here in MLB The Show 17 franchise mode. So, oh yeah, we was used to going ahead and continue for the Jays one, but let's go into the new one. A brand new franchise mode in The Show 17. I'll oh, skip that, we don't need that. Okay, so now, <laughs> let's go into this one. We have current, default, or save. There's no current rosters right now, at least that I'm not aware of. So, does it continue for current? And see what we have here. So as you know, we do have my franchise mode for this year is going to be get take a look at it, the Rockies. So the Rockies, the Colorado Rockies, take a look at them. In the NL West, they are 89.5 million as is their team budget. They're first in speed, though. Holy crap! Second in defense, 26th in pitching, 12th in power, 12th in contact. Their team actually looks not that bad though this year. The only problem though is the fact is they changed their logo. I love their logo before, but they changed that one. Just because they wanted to. So let's go to advance and I guess take a look at our settings. So GM contracts, leave that on. No legend free agents, no CPU roster control. No, we'll allow CPU trading actually. Ignore budgets off. Uh, force trades off. Designated hitter. Auto as usual. So continue that one. So let's take a look at this one. I haven't seen this before. Okay. So we have coaching tasks. Okay. Got that. Um, okay. So take a look. I'll just do general manager because. That's all I want to do. So we'll do manual, manual, and manual. Okay. So you got that all done. So the thing is, we'll go to spring training and see what our team looks like before we do any of this kind of stuff. So actually, wait. Should I go and sim spring training first? That might be a good idea. But anyway, I'll take a look at the new menus on the show 17. So far, they look clean, though. They look nice for this year, though. So budget, 763000 per week. I haven't seen that before. Sponsorship's still on there. GM goals, still on there as usual. But the menu looks a lot more cleaner this year. I love it. It actually looks very good. And take a look at the calendar. The calendar, it looks almost similar, but at the same time, it's a complete overhaul when you take a look at, like, the blue, the black. It just looks a lot more cleaner and more a lot more futuristic in a way. So you have spring training right here. But I want to take a look at our lineups. So, our roster first. We'll do a team overview, as we usually did the Jays franchise mode. So, now our first overall player, the best player on the team. I want to keep him for the rest of the franchise mode. Nolan Arenado, third baseman, 93 overall, 25 years old. This man is young, and he's still got room to grow as a player. So, player card. I love how they changed the player card this year to make it a lot more cleaner and nicer looking. But, uh, contact, pretty good contact, great power, great overall stats for amazing player in Nolan Arenado. Pull hitter, let's see what it is overall player morale is he's satisfied i guess he's all right but quirks is quirks are bomber excellent hitting home runs i love that soft hands yeah, excels at fielding the ball cleanly sniper has an extremely accurate throwing arm you gotta love that for his defense pressure cooker performs better when there's runners on base you gotta love that one too unbreakable too he's got an unbreakable too avoids injuries and recovers energy at a high rate home buddy performs better when playing at home okay like everybody else uh day player plays better during day games unfazed excels when hitting with two strikes Breaking ball hitter excels hitting breaking balls. This man can do everything though. He can hit breaking balls, hit home runs, amazing defense, great attitude. I love Nolan Arenado's quirks in this game. But uh, I like how they have the new stats where they have. I don't know if they had the team before. I don't know if they do have the, had the team before, but they finally have the team uh, on here for their stats card. I think they had it last year actually, but it's just kind of hard to tell. So, Nolan or not, take a look at him. Now, next up is Cargo, the man in the myth, the legend, Carlos Gonzalez, right fielder, 88 overall, 31 years old, making 8.8 million per year. So, take a look at his overall stats. Great stats for a player. His power is amazing, though. 83 power against righties is pretty good. Uh, take a look at his player morale. He's ecstatic. He loves that. 84 overall, up to 88 overall because his morale. Uh, his quirks are cannon, extremely, uh, has an extremely strong throwing arm, performs better at home. Okay. Uh, we do have Fighter, performs better in the ninth inning or fight later, so pretty good quirks there for Carlos Gonzalez. Next up is DJ LeMayhew, 85 overall, 28-year-old second baseman. DJ, he's a pretty good player. His contact is actually really good. His fielding is great. I mean, the Rockies are a very underrated team, though. Their players, their top players are great. But his quirks are the fact that he's a hitting machine, excels at getting base hits, bunt master, great at bunting, home body. He's good at home and phase when he gets two strikes, just like Nolan. Breaking ball hitter, just exactly like Nolan. Rally monkey performs better when the team is behind. You gotta love that in a player. Fighter performs better in the ninth inning or later, just like Cargo. And that's about it for his quirks for DJ LeMayu. Next up, we have Charlie Blackman, the man who they tried trading for Marcus Stroman earlier on in the offseason to the Jays. The Jays declined that one for straight up because 
because they didn't want Charlie Blackman. But we have him on here, center fielder, 85 overall, 30 years old, B potential as usual, great contact. His hitting's all, his power is all right, I guess. His fielding's all right. He's just an all right player. His speed though is actually not that bad for a guy with contact. I like that. It's Charlie Blackman, pretty underrated player, I guess, if you take a look at his stats. But I mean, his player player morale. He's making three and a half million, and he's happy with it. So I love that. But his quirks, he's a hitting machine, he's a thief, he likes stealing bases, as usual. Pressure cooker, unfazed, dead red. Wait, hold up, Excel's hitting fastballs, that's good for us. Rally monkey, uh, situational hitter, and that's about it. So his quirk's very good for that too. Next up though is Ian Desmond, first baseman, 80, 80 overall, 31 years old. Take a look at him. Ian Desmond, great defense. Uh, his hitting's pretty good too, I guess, it's alright. So Ian Desmond just signed this offseason, I think he's injured in real life, I'm not sure. He might be injured in real life. Because I think I saw a notification earlier on the off season uh, or in the spring training. But uh, his um, player morale, he's all right. He likes that. His quirks is unbreakable and home buddy. Okay, that's all right. Next up, though, is John Gray, 80 overall. I guess he's considered our ace because he's our, our top player as a pitcher. But uh, 25 years old, 80 overall, B potential. He's a pretty young player who can excel pretty well if we give him the right growth and development. So take a look at his pitching stats. They're pretty much average. They're all right. They're pretty good, I guess. They're all right for a player's ED overall. Uh, next up, though, is his player morale. He's satisfied. He's making 980k, so he's making a little bit of money. You might have to pay him in a few years in, uh, when he, he enters free agency. But pickoff artist, great at picking off players. So next up is the man, the myth, the legend, Trevor Story, 79 overall, 24 years old. We do have him in the intro that I made last night. He's a shortstop, replaced too low very well, though. His power is 83 overall, his power against lefty, 84. So his power is very good. His contact, not so much, but it'll get better in due time. So take a look at his quirks when you see his quirks. Excels at hitting home runs, pretty obvious when he had a few home runs in his debut. Home buddy, night player, and breaking ball hitter. So next up is Jake McGee, 79 overall, 30 years old, relief pitcher. Then you have Adam Adovino, 79 overall, 31 years old. Next up is David Dahl, our, our center fielder, 78 overall, 23 years old. So maybe David Dahl could go and push out Charlie Black, and that's the thing. But the thing is, you could probably actually put him at left field to go and start off his career. So the first thing we did to do is either bring Blackman over to left field or David Dahl to left field, because one of them has to play left field. But next up is Tyler Anderson, 77 overall, uh, 27 years old. Wait, hold up. We'll do David Dahl's quirks. I want to see him. So his contact, pretty good, I guess. His fielding is all right. And uh, I want to see his quirks, though. Speed, sir. Elite running speed. So what is his speed in here? 85. So he's got great speed, though, for a young player. Like him. Uh, night player and a rally monkey. Okay. Next up is Tyler Anderson, 77 overall, 27 years old. B potential. I want to see his quirks so quickly. Home buddy, day player, and pickoff artist. Next up is Mike Dunn, 77, 31 years old. Not that bad right there, I guess, for a relief pitcher. Because you want your relief pitchers to be in the high 70s, because, I mean, that's usually with the, how... Like, they're going to they're gonna be pretty good if they're in the high 70s, I guess. They're all right. But uh, next up is Geraldo Rupera, 77 overall, 29 years old. Next up is Carlos Estevez. And I swear, I swear on my life, I think Charlie Sheen's real name is Carlos Estevez, too. So, that's pretty funny right there. But anyway, 76 overall, 24 years old. You have Charlie Sheen right here. Uh, I guess you can call him Wild Thing if you want because he's a relief pitcher. So actually, you want to call him Wild Thing. Carlos Estevez, Wild Thing, B potential, 76 overall, 24 years old. Next up, though, is the old man, the man, the legend, Chad Quails, 75 overall, 38 years old. This man's old, but he's not that old that he's that terrible. He's 75, pretty decent overall, I'd say. For a guy who's 38 years old, because usually they're, they're pretty bad at 38. But next up, though, is Jason Mott. I had him on the my Jays one, because I think earlier on my Jays franchise mode, like the Colorado Rockies were the hell of the, the uh, I was going to say NHL, but the hell of the MLB. They're terrible. So we traded R.E. Dickey, who's like 75 overall. I knew he was going to go down to like a 68. We traded him for a whole bunch of relief pitchers, including I think it was Jason Mott and Adam Onovino, plus like another player, too. But we got a few good relief pitchers out of that deal with Charlie Ari Dickey, but I'm not going to do that this time, though. I want to keep Mott and Adovino on the team. But next up, though, we do have, I guess, Tyler Chatwood, 72 overall, 27 years old. Next up, there's a few more prospects. We have, I guess, Carmen Hander Hernandez, who is a 72 and 22 years old. We have Robert Hutton, 72, 25 years old. We do have Dustin Garneau, 72, 29 years old. We do have uh, Chad Bettis, who I think has cancer right now, so... Hopefully he recovers that one. I want to see him play well in this franchise mode. 71 overall, 27 years old as a starting pitcher. We do have uh, Jake Bauman at a 70 and 29. Mark Reynolds is 70 and 33. And we do have the 18-year-old Daryl Schultz, though. Darnell, oh, not Daryl Schultz. Darnell Schultz, who I want to see his, his stats. He's got 
decent contact for an 18 year old. His speed of 59 needs some work there. But other than that, though, he's not that bad of an 18 year old. You usually see 18 year olds at like 46 overall. So pretty rare exception to do or to go for our, uh, Darnell Schultz on that one or Schultz. I don't know how to say that too well. But uh, next up is Alexi Amarista, 70 overall, 27 years old. Next up is a top 50 prospect in Jordan Patterson, 59 or 69 overall, 25 years old, B potential. We have Willie Montez, 67, 27. We have DJ Porter, 67, 26. Do you have Chad Rusin or Russin? 67, 30 years old. You have Pat Valika. Wait, Val. Valka. Valaka? I don't know how to say that. These are names are tough, though, man. They have 67, 24 years old. B potential nonetheless. You have Kevin Williams, 67, 25. You have Raymel Tapla, 67, 23. You have Steven Cardulo, 66, 29. There's a whole bunch of players. I want to check out the top prospects. So you have Jeff Hoffman acquired in. That too low deal, 65 from the Blue Jays, 24 years old, 8 potential, this man can get very good in a few years. His quirks, the quirks yet. And uh, I just want to develop Jeff Hoffman into a great player like he is going to be in real life eventually. But uh, next we have Tom Murphy at 65, 25 years old. You have Tony Walters at 65, 24, so two good, good catchers in the system. Uh, we have Brandon Gilchrist at 64. Actually, I want to check the top prospects. So 64, 26 for Brandon Hearn at a B potential. Anyone else on this team? We have uh, DeAndre Colbert, bear, 62, 24 years old, B potential. Uh, anyone else on here? We do have Jorge Lopez, a 59, 22, A potential at a center fielder. Anyone else in here? We do have German Marquez, 57, 22 years old for a starting pitcher, B potential. Anyone else? Oh, we have Matt uh, Kerstall at a 54, 25 years old, B potential. We have Bob Leon, 52, 23 years old, B potential. And we do have another A potential guy, Floyd Shirley. Don't call me Shirley, but 51, 27 years old, A potential. If you, I don't know, I'm just going to win the next one. So, uh, Miguel Castro, 50 overall, 22 years old. I believe there's Miguel Castro on the Yankees right now, 50 overall, 22 years old, B potential. If another 18 year old, the last man on the list, or close to the list, uh, we do have Bob, or Bo Harper, 59, 18 years old, uh, C potential. See, that's what I mean by 18 year olds. Usually they're 49 overall, pretty bad. Whereas that one guy is 70 overall, though. It's pretty interesting there, but uh, anyone else, that's about it. So, they went through the entire, basically the entire system, the entire prospects, got through that. That was a lot, long time to go through that, but now take a look at our starting rotation and see how our look, rotation looks right now. So, we do have the man, uh, John Gray, as a race, 80 overall. Next up is Tyler Anderson, who's a lefty, 77 overall. You have Tyler Chatwood, 72, right, and he's a righty. Uh, Chad Bettis is 71, and he's a righty. Jeff Hoffman is 65, and a righty. So, our system is just full, just stacked of uh, our uh, bullpen, though. So, check out our bullpen. Do we even have... Where's Greg Holland? Where is Greg Holland? Is Greg Holland even on this? Is he injured? Where's Greg Holland, then? Did they make this before they signed him? So next up is our lineup card. We do have Charlie Blackman at leadoff. He's at 85 overall. We have David Dahl at DH. Nolan Arenado in third spot. We do have Carlos Gonzalez, Cargo 88 overall in the fourth spot. Jeffrey Story in the fifth spot. We have DJ LeMayu in the sixth. Ian Desmond in the seventh. Jordan Pera in the eighth. And we do have Justin Garneau in the ninth. So, uh, take a look at our bench. With our bench, I'm pretty sure Tony Walters, I kind of want to play him over Dustin Garneau, but just based on overalls, Garneau's in there right now. So, Next episode will be the overall spring training, the managing of the team, getting rid of players, adding free agents, all the kind of jazz, the next one. So, I guess let us end off the first episode of the Rockies franchise mode off right here. Make sure to like and subscribe for more the franchise mode, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.